Hello, my name is Matias Cavodi. I'd like to welcome guys to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a fantastic series that I enjoyed a lot when it came out. Wolverine and the X-Men, written by Jason Aaron. He really killed it on the series. And uh, we're going to cover, actually, the last story arc of this particular run. Then I'll go back and do the, all the other issues. But this last story arc, is, man, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Um, just this whole story, the way Jason Aaron does a really good job and incorporating new villains, adding to the X Men mythology in general, um, it's really good in general. And uh, but the thing I like the most in the series is the evolution of Wolverine as a character, because I've been reading X Men since the late '80s, so I've seen Xavier being the leader of the team, Cyclops, uh, Storm, Jean Grey, Rogue, but never Wolverine. And it was really cool to see Wolverine as the leader of a whole faction of the X-Men because this happened after Schism. So we had two factions, Cyclops, Society, and Wolverine. The leader of a whole faction of the mutants within the Marvel Universe and also the head of Xavier's school, which actually is not Xavier's school, it's Jean Grey's school. And um, so Wolverine having to deal with all these re new responsibilities, having to be um, more prudent in his actions, uh, having to take care of these kids make sure these kids get a good education and all these new responsibilities are are really heavy it's a really heavy weight on his shoulders but he's sort of being able to prevail and get the school working and and so this the way Wolverine deals with this whole situation is really well written it's a lot of fun to read and this evolution of Wolverine just doesn't come out of nowhere like they really took it their time to build up Wolverine up until this point the same way they did with Cyclops they when he stopped being a Boy Scout, he started to become a rebel. So this this whole series really illustrates this point, how Wolverine sort of matures as a character. And we see other aspects of this guy outside of being the total badass and being the best at what he does. So this first story sort of, sort of it focuses a little bit on the relationship between Wolverine and his estranged brother, Doc Logan. He was presented as a, a villain in the series. And... Um, so this particular story, it's it's a little interesting. I'm not going to go, jump too deep into it. But the, th the most important aspect of this story, I was about to say the thing is, and I have to stop saying that, is that Wolverine's brother, Dog, gets recruited into the New Hellfire Club. This kid, because the presentation of the New Hellfire Club being the main villains of this series was really good. It's a, a bunch of brats <laughs> They have a lot of money and they're insane homicidal killers, each in a different way, being led by this kid called Kid Kill Cade Kill Kilgore. Yeah. <laughs> I never can remember his name, even though he's a really good character. And uh these new kids, the new inner circle, like they feel like really good, viable bad guys because and one big issue is like when the X-Men are going to catch up with these kids, what are they going to do to them? They're kids. <laughs> They're minors. Um, they can't punch them or do stuff like that. So that was always a really interesting aspect of what's going to happen when the X-Men finally catch up with the inner circle. So they recruit Hog Logan into this new secret plan that Cade Kilgore is going through. And what's happening is that some of Wolverine's students are starting to defect into the school and we get to see i can never remember this character's name even though she's pretty interesting idiot Oya, idiot is her name and her like mutant code name is oya she defects into the hellfire club and we have here poor brew that in a previous issues he got shot in the head so he, he loses his mental faculties like he was super smart and now he's reverted back into a normal brood and um and he's such a lovable character lovable character so you feel really bad for him so in the next issue we have wolverine and rachel summers trying to infiltrate hellfire club bases trying to find the inner circle trying to catch these kids and stop them once and for all because they've, they've been causing all kinds of headaches for wolverine and while we have beast he's going to space with poor little broom and to consult with Zanto, another new bad guy that was introduced in the series. The guy's like a, uh, an intergalactic craven. He, he hunts uh, aliens across the galaxy. He's a collector too. Um, he's a master of zoology, interstellar zoology. So the thing is, Beast asks him 
Zanto is like, can you help this poor broom? He's lost his mental faculties. Um, how can we help him be smart again? And Zanto, like the story arc that we have with him is he wants to capture this a poor broom because he's a mutant within his species. So he, he wants to study him, analyze him. And he's like, no, he's just fine. He's just the way he has to be now. He's, he has to be a normal bro brood. This is how they work. This is how they are. He's just fine. So you sort of feel really bad for poor Brew. He's become all feral and stuff like that. And um, then we have Kid Omega, Quint Choir. He's trying to find Oya, trying to find out what, because he's he's sort of in love with her. Or they have, I'm not sure if he's in love or they're really just friends. Or, but the thing is, they do have a connection and a relationship. He's trying to find her. And what he discovers is that she had defected into the Hellfire Club. So. He decides to join the Hellfire Club to the Finder. While back in space, we have this another new villain called Philistine. His character design is just awesome. I really like him. He ports into the station, recruits Zanto. Also, while he does this, he takes Brew with him and just whisks these guys away after causing all this, all this trouble, havoc there, and. At the end of issue number 30, we have Santos part joined the Hellfire Club. Paige Gither, who is um, Cannonball's sister, she's sort of gone mad. Her powers have sort of drawn her, um, driven her crazy. Toad has also defected. Here we have Quickfire joining. So they all get ported away to the new Hellfire installations. And what the Hellfire Club is doing is actually starting their own school of young mutants. And this school is just fantastic. I got a real blast reading these particular issues. The headmaster of the school is Mystique, which you can't go wrong with her. We have Sauron being a professor, one of my favorite X-Men villains. Zanto teaches um, inter uh, interstellar zoo zoology or xeno xenobiology. There we go. We have Dog Logan being the a physical education professor and he has a bottle of whiskey he's drinking while he's teaching the kids um, we have Master Pandemonium an old school West Coast Avenger villain he's lame as hell so he's so lame I love him he teaches the kids dark arts the arts sorry and we have this late new Lady Mojo who teaches some uh, public relations Paige Gither is uh, the librarian and the danger room is just a Wendigo in the courtyard, and I found that to be hilarious. Like they throw these kids in there, and they, if they can survive Wendigo, and they they pass the program, so the training program. So, and you have poor Toad. Like Toad is like, what can I do? I'm super smart. I'm, he's actually a really brilliant. How can I help uh, here with the Hellfire Club and make you happy, Paige? Because he's in love with Paige. He said, uh, no, you're going to be a janitor here, too, because he was a janitor back in Wolverine School. So it's like poor Toad, the tragedy of his story. Like His whole story arc during this Wolverine the X-Men series really breaks your heart. So Wolverine keeps on trying to find his the, the inner circle. He's going left and right, taking down Sentinel factories all over the place, killing off Hellfire foot soldiers all over the place. And what we discover is like Quentin Quire asks... Uh, Cade Kilgore is like, what the hell are you doing? You're training young mutants. Um, isn't don't you hate like the inner circles? The thing is like, uh, don't you build sentinels and stuff like that? You want to exterminate them? He's like, yeah, I'm making evil mutants so I can let them go in the world so they can cause trouble and people out of fear are gonna buy my sentinels. So it's a perfect <laughs> scheme for his his sentinel sales uh, sales. So. That's the main motivation between, uh, behind um, Cade's actions. And we discover that he has the... I can't remember this particular portal. I think it's called the Seeds Pelerus or something like that. Which those who go inside get what their hearts desire. And so this was used a lot during the X-Men run back in the late 80s. The X-Men would jump in and they would come out totally different or the lives had totally changed. In this case, those who jump in get their powers uh, augmented. Like this kid that shot snot out of his nose, there wasn't much. He jumps in and like he gets these super snot powers and super strength. So I um, also remember Master Mold back in the day jumped in here and, and Bastion came out. A really, really cool um, 
X-Men villain. There was a fusion between Master Mold and Nimrod. So, as the story progresses, we still have... Like, the art is written is done by Nick Bradshaw, most of it. And he does a really good job, but I don't like the way he draws necks. His necks look really weird for some reason. But the rest, he does a really, really killer job. Like, here. Let me see if I can find... Here, again, the neck... It's just a terrible job, and I don't know why. So, as the story goes on, Wolverine's trying to hunt down his students. He uses these Bamfs, this horde of mini nightcrawlers that I really liked in the series. Uh, he bribes them with whis with whiskey to try to hunt these uh, hunt down his lost students. So he's jumping around the globe. Here we also get Lord Deathstrike. This character also was really cool. And, like, the only letdown that I didn't like how they resolve is how they find the base. Is like, at one moment, Beast goes to Krakoa. He was created by the Inner Circle, but befriended and became part of the X-Men. And Beast, like, Wolverine couldn't find the base. And Beast goes, tells Krakoa, hey, where did you come from? And Krakoa just gets up and takes the X-Men there. And uh, that was, like, that felt really weak. They could have done a better job with that. But in the final showdown, like, it's epic. Like, really, Jason Aaron goes crazy. Uh, Nick Bradshaw with the art. Like, Iceman creates a gigantic ice Voltron. Krakoa. There's a horde of Krakoas on the island ready to attack. But, and, like, look at the art. Like, he almost jumps a shark. He almost goes too crazy. But it's just perfect it, where it is. So, this final battle... It's just really awesome. Like, I don't want to spoil it. Just go go and read these issues. Issues 29 to 35. At least is, those are the issues in this hardcover. The best battle for me is Lady Mojo versus Dupe. In the way this, this battle trans transpires is just hilarious. So, I'm going to leave this video here. You guys go out and read. Find out what happens to Kate Kilgore. How, what happens to the Inner Circle how this particular series ends. Go out and read the whole Wolverine X-Men run. If you're a big Wolverine fan, you're going to get a blast out of it. If you're a big X-Men fan, obviously you too. And see you guys next time. Bye.